Hi, this is Mario with Mario's Math Tutoring, coming to you with another math video to help you boost your score in your math class, improve your understanding, and hopefully make learning math a lot less stressful. So what we're going to talk about in this video is how to master negative numbers, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Now, I work with a lot of students on a daily basis, and they're oftentimes very far along in math, but they're missing some of these uh, fundamental concepts like how to work with negative numbers and it holds them back a little bit um, and it might be holding you back as well. Uh, so let's see if we can clear this up so that you can not be so reliant on your calculator to do some of these simple operations. Um, so let's see if we can get right into it and I'll, I'll show you how to work with these negative numbers. So first thing is let's talk about adding negative numbers. So when you have a positive number and a negative number and you add them together, how do you know if it's gonna be positive or negative? Now you can see over here, I've drawn a little scale, okay, like a little balance, okay? And the way I think about it is, if you're gonna add a negative number, I think about it over here, and a positive number over here, if you have a negative three and a positive three, you're gonna be completely, perfectly balanced, right? So they're actually gonna cancel each other out. It's kinda of like if you walk forward three steps and you walk backwards three steps, you're gonna be right in the same position. Negative is like walking backwards, positive is like walking forwards. But say for example you have five negatives, okay, and two positives, your scale's gonna to tip towards the negative side, right? Because it's heavier, there's more on that side. It's kinda of like if you walk backwards five steps, but you only walk forward two steps, you're gonna be further backwards than you were originally when you first started. And the question is, is like, how much further back, right? So let's look at some examples. I'll show you what I mean. So this first one here, we've got three plus negative seven. So you're adding a positive number and a negative number. So what you can do is you can think about walking forwards three steps, walking backwards seven steps, or you can use my little scale analogy here of weighing them. Okay, which one's heavier? The positives or the negatives? Well, there's more negatives, so it's gonna tilt to the negative side. That tells us that our answer is gonna be negative. The next question is, is how much more negative, how much heavier, right, is it? Well, if you just take seven minus three, that's four, and our answer is gonna be negative four. Now, if you wanna kinda walk it out, you can. You can say, I'm gonna walk forwards three steps and walk backwards seven steps, and you'll see that you're further back four. But as you do these problems over and over again, it's good just to recognize right away, I've got a positive and a negative, I have more negatives. How many more? Four more, so it's a negative four. So you're with me so far, hang with me and you'll get it as we do some more problems. The next one we've got a negative four plus a negative two. So if we go to my scale analogy here, we're stacking up like four bricks on the negative side and another two bricks. So it's definitely tilting to the negative side. It's all negative actually, right? There's nothing to counterbalance it or to cancel out those negatives. It's like walking backwards four steps plus another two steps. So how far back are you? Six steps, right? So negative six. So that's pretty easy. When they're both negative and you're adding them together, you just add the numbers and it's negative. Just like if they're both positive, you add them together and it's positive. The one that gets students is that when one's negative and one's positive, sometimes they think, uh-oh, what do I do? Look at which one's bigger. That'll determine the sign. If the positive one's bigger, it'll be positive. If the negative one's bigger, it'll be negative. Then just subtract the two numbers, okay? And that'll give you the difference and you've got it. So in this case, the difference was four. It was negative because we had more negatives. Let's go on to subtraction now. Subtraction and addition are really the same thing. Okay, what do you mean, right? What do you mean, Mario? How come they're the same thing? Well, what you wanna do when you subtract is you wanna change it to an addition problem. And the way you do that is like this. Subtraction is like adding the opposite. Okay, now if you don't believe me, just take something very simple like zero minus seven. So if you have nothing, right, okay, and you take away seven, that's gonna put you into the negative range, right? Okay, it's like spending $7 you don't have. You go $7 into debt, right? But you can quickly see that that's the same thing as adding the opposite. We have zero plus negative seven. Zero is really nothing, and you end up with negative seven. You get the same exact result. So what we're gonna do here in this video is just to think about subtraction as adding the opposite. So all you do is you just change the subtraction sign to addition, and you just change the number that you're subtracting, that sign, to the opposite. So if it's negative, you make it positive. If it's positive, you make it negative. You just make it the opposite. You don't change this sign though, just the second number. Now we're back to what we were talking about originally. We have a negative 
and a positive, right? And we say, which one's gonna win this tug of war, right? Okay, well the positive one, there's more on the positive side than on the negative side. The positives are gonna win out, why? They've got two more people on their side, right? So this is gonna be a positive two, okay? If this one was larger, the answer would be negative. And all you have to do is subtract. You say eight minus six, two, that's the difference. It's positive two because we have more on the positive side. If you had exactly negative six and positive six, they're gonna cancel one another out, that's gonna be zero. Let's do another example. Negative 10 minus five. From now on, we're not gonna think about subtraction, we're just gonna think about addition. Because subtraction and addition, they're really a very similar operations. Subtraction's like adding the opposite. Okay, now we're back to familiar territory, right? We've got a negative and a negative, we're adding them together. It's just like if you walk backwards 10 steps and another five steps backwards, how far backwards are you? Negative 15 steps. Okay, so you're with me so far? Okay, let's switch gears now. Let's go over to multiplying and dividing. Now there's good news, okay, multiplying and dividing, the rules are the same. So it, it reduces down what we have to remember, right? And let's just go over the rules real quick here. So if you have a positive times a positive, you get a positive. That's what we learned a long time ago. We don't have a tr any trouble with that, right? If you have a negative times a negative, those become a positive, okay? So a negative times a negative is a positive. But when you have one negative and one positive, or a positive and a negative, it doesn't matter the order, but one's negative, one's positive, you're gonna get a negative. So mainly these are probably the two new ones for you, right? Is that when you have two negatives, you get a positive, or one positive, one negative, you get a negative. It's the same thing with dividing. So if I was to change this into a division problem, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And if one's negative and one's positive we're dividing, we get a negative. So let's look at some examples and I'll show you what I mean. So over here we have a negative four times a negative eight. We know four times eight is 32, okay, from memorizing our multiplication facts, but a negative times a negative gives us a positive 32. Over here we have a negative six times a positive two, one's negative, one's positive, so we're gonna get a negative. So that's negative 12, six times two, 12. And then this last one, we've got a negative 144 divided by 12, a negative divided by a positive is a negative, and 144 divided by 12 is 12, so we get negative 12. For most students, multiplying and dividing is very easy because the rules are very simple. You just have to say, okay, two negatives, I get a positive, one negative, one positive, I get a negative. And it's just easy, whether you're multiplying and dividing, the same rules. But what kind of confuses students is when they switch back and forth from multiplying and dividing to adding and subtracting, the rules are different. So what I suggest doing is try to simplify it by making every subtraction problem into an addition problem by adding the opposite. So you change this to addition and you change this to the opposite. Just do another example, negative six minus 10. That's really like adding the opposite, so it becomes a negative 10. Now we have two negatives, we're gonna get a negative. If they were both positive, like six plus 10, of course we would get a positive, and then the third case is if one's negative, let's just say like this, and one's positive, that's when we have that balance. That's where we have to say like which one's larger. More positives, it's gonna be a positive. If we have more negatives, it's gonna be a negative. What's the actual number? That's where you take the difference or you subtract. 12 minus six is six. Since we have more positives, the answer is gonna be positive. If we had more negatives, the answer would be negative, but you're subtracting those two numbers when one's positive and one's negative. I hope this helped you understand negative numbers a lot better. Subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in future videos and I look forward to helping you boost your score in your math class. I'll talk to you soon.